welcome to the Coal Collective for the Coal de Bordes, Souleur and Abisque from Argelès Gazos. Couple of different ways out of town from Argelès. You can go on the main road, the D918, straight up the Valazun. It's a little bigger road, but as we're not the Tour de France, we can actually take the back road. I always like to go on the D101 up to the cute little medieval village at Saint Savan. You've got some really nice views over to Hortecam as well, so it gives you a bit of early mountain motivation. Climbs a little bit longer that way, about 4Ks, but I think it's worth it. be the least well-known climb of the three that we're going to tackle today. It's actually the longest, 18 kilometers, climbing up to 1157 meters at an average of 6%, so it's quite a tough climb. See why I prefer taking this route now. Straight away you feel like you're getting into nature, just the sound of water for company. And it actually feels a lot more like a ride than just a climb per se, because you're constantly dipping up and down, undulating. There are some steep pitches though, so uh, with every steep pitch there's a bit of a downhill just to, to catch your breath again, so it is a good warm-up. It's only as we pass through into Estang, we're going to take this right-hander on the 603. This is where the road really kicks up for the best part of the climb. Seventeen kilometres on the clock and 700 metres of elevation gain. We reach the top of the Bordes. We're actually gifted with a bit of a plateau at the top here. Last kilometre is almost flat. Gives you a chance to catch your breath. The descent's only short though. 3.6k. Fairly technical. Some twists and turns for sure, but not a lot of recovery time before we start the Soulor. and a half now before we uh, we hit the village of Aaron's Masseuse. You can actually see it just about down there in the distance behind the trees. What I like about this lookout point is you can see the Soulor 
pretty much all of it actually, snaking its way all the way up the side of the mountain there, bend after bend. You can also, if you look closely, you can see the valley road as well, which we would have been on, so a little bit further down. We're at uh, just over a thousand meters elevation at the moment, so we're gonna descend a little bit more, pick up that next climb. the Sulor at 877 meters, climbing our way up to 1474, so a bit of coal collective mass gives me uh, about 597 meters elevation gain. Seven kilometers and the gradient's really consistent, much more linear than the Bordeaux. So you can actually get into a bit of a rhythm, but it's seven, eight, close to 9% all the way. So quite a tough 7K. I always remember the first time I made it to the summit of the Sulor. I'd actually come up from Ferrier, a uh, beautiful ascent up to 1474 meters. And the uh, sun was starting to dip, actually much like today. It's a bit of a race against time. I remember getting to the, this point here and thinking to myself, looking in the distance, seeing that little ribbon of tarmac going off towards the abyss there and uh, hadn't ridden it before. I just, it was, my mind was racing because I was actually going in the other direction. And I came back and rode it, the Cirque de la Tour. Um, nostalgic memories, I guess, uh, always puts me in a good, good place when I do ride it. Definitely one of my favourite roads in the Pyrenees and uh, I've, I've ridden a lot of roads around the world and it's up there with the best of them. So uh, yeah, looking forward to checking it out again and uh, hopefully uh, beating the daylight this time. No matter how many times I actually ride the Cirque de la Tour, I never get tired of it. I think it's because you just feel that you're really pinned on the edge of the mountain. And I take a peek over here, it's probably a, it's got to be 60, 70 foot. Back in 1951, Wim van Est, the Dutchman, actually the first Dutchman to ever wear the yellow jersey, he was chasing the leaders and uh, he actually careered over the edge here. You know, heart stopping moment. And uh, they used the, the tubular tires to actually they tied them all together and pulled him out and uh, he made it, he got back into the race but uh, the team actually had to pull out because they stretched all their tubulars so uh, you know one mistake on this road and it could be costly.
last light on the Abisk. What a way to end the day. We've got 1,780 meters elevation, just under 40K. My legs are really feeling it. Tell you what, I can't actually fathom what the tour riders are gonna be doing. They've got a 200K stage, and they're actually doing the Aspan and the Tourmalet before this. So, not to mention a 16K descent to finish off into La Ruin to uh, cap the mountains off. That's gonna be absolutely crazy. But uh, I'm gonna end the day here. I think it's a real fitting way the, uh, the tour are going to end as well on the Abyss. Legendary climb, legendary race. We're going to see a real fight all the way to the line.